Welcome back to the Spectre Creative Channel with me, your host, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick, longtime collector and toy maker. And today I'm doing a video on a lot of requests I'm getting in the comment section, noting that our toy collections lately seem to be under attack. And what is it that we can do about this? How to protect toys that we love and keep them at retail? Especially when we're seeing more and more toys are showing up not just at retail, but they're going to the clearance aisle. And I don't mean eventually winding up on the clearance aisle. I mean, they're going directly to the clearance aisle. We're seeing toys that haven't even hit or are selling on eBay for high prices and brand new waves, brand new lines, things that collectors are actively looking for, and they don't even make it to the aisle. They just go right to clearance. Now, sometimes when toys lines wind up at clearance, it's obvious why. They're not performing well. They've had their chance. But when we're seeing product for waves that aren't even out yet or just starting to come, like the Emperor Palpatine figure number 200 in the vintage collection, he's showing up directly in clearance aisles or Masters of the Universe Origins. We are now seeing it on clearance at Walmart, and there are still so many waves yet to come that if they do wind up at Walmart, would follow Skeletor directly towards the toy aisle, and I'll explain why this is and one of the reasons. So obviously this leads to a lot of frustration because as collectors, we're always trying to find the latest thing because we want to complete our collection. That's the whole point, right? Acquisition, bragging rights, the feeling of collecting them all. I mean, it's right there on the back of almost every 1980s toy line, right? Here's the cross sale and you need to collect them all. We've been told to do this since we were little kids and we're doing it more and more as adult collectors. Now, as someone who has worked in the toy industry and still works in the toy industry, I have a way of sort of pointing out the obvious, or at least not the obvious necessarily, but I guess it's more that I have the ability to read signs and interpret them. And I really started this channel to try to explain a lot of that to my fellow collectors because I have, I guess, called the advantage of having worked for so many years in the toy industry on collector lines and understanding how it works behind the scenes. And when I talk about a line not performing well, it doesn't mean I'm a hater at all. It just means that I tend to be armed with a giant book of random facts, or maybe less random facts that actually are true facts about the toy industry, versus having an opinion about the toy industry, which I have opinions as well. But facts sometimes trump opinions. So if I said something like, the Death Star is blowing up, it doesn't make me anti-Death Star, it just makes me being able to notice what's happening. And I mean, I don't think anybody is pro-Death Star. I mean, I don't know, maybe, like, death is pro-Death Star. But, okay, that's not the point. The point being is, when I make videos talking about the future of some of my favorite toy lines and what's happening with them, and doing it from the perspective of working in the toy industry, it's not hoping lines are going to fail and rooting for them to be on clearance. It's trying to explain to my fellow collectors from my experience why this is happening. And let's talk about that. So we're seeing more and more toy lines that we love and collect going directly to the clearance aisle or at least significant prices off the SRP before sometimes they even hit. So, you know, it's like go, the, go directly to the clearance aisle, do not pass go. And this is not a good sign because it means that the assortment itself is marked for clearance, not necessarily the specific SKU you're seeing. So any SKU that is part of that. So what can be done about this? Are you going to be part of the problem, or are you the solution? Well, of course, one thing fans have done in the past is really rally around toy lines, especially online, and get the word out that people need to step up and either buy or pre-order or get involved, really, with the purchase of a toy line that might be on the cutting block, shall we say. And this has been very successful, and fans absolutely have themselves to credit for a lot of product making it to retail or making it to online, like things like with the HasLab, the whole Back the Barge campaign was fans rising up to really support a product getting made. And with lines like Motu Origins and the Vintage series, there are waves that haven't hit yet that are advertised, yet we're already seeing them on clearance. Thank you to Jedi Temple Archives, I grabbed this image from one of my favorite Star Wars websites. I definitely visit them daily, and they have helped me learn many times when new figures hit, and I've gotten figures simply because I read about it on their website, so I definitely want to give them props. But, as you can see from this image, both these lines are on clearance. 
And this has to do with the assortment barcode. So toy lines ship in assortments. It's how retailers order them. They don't order by figure. So when a character like Skeletor goes on clearance, it triggers every figure in this assortment. So if a... To go on clearance. So if a figure from a previous wave does not sell well, and this triggers the, the entire assortment to go on clearance, future waves that haven't even shipped yet will now also be flagged for clearance and go right to the clearance aisle. This is why we see new characters that we don't have yet showing up first in clearance aisle, because previous waves underperformed, so the entire assortment has now been flagged for clearance, even though the new waves may sell better. All right, so what can we possibly do about this? Well, we have to keep toys from being flagged as clearance fodder, and the best way to do that is to get kids playing with them, because I know I've said this before, and I hate sounding like I'm trying to harp, but kids are the lifeblood of the toy industry. We are obviously very emotionally involved, and we're collectors, but having grown up playing with toys, you hopefully remember that's really what the point of a toy is, is to play with it. But kids don't want to be forced to play with a toy. They don't want to be said, hey, this is daddy's toy or mommy's toy, you should play with it. If that was the way it was in the 1980s, we would have all been playing with Howdy Doody toys, right? And we weren't. We were discovering our own new IP, and every generation wants that. They want to feel like they own the entertainment for their generation. So can kids get into older IP like He-Man and Star Wars? Absolutely. Of course they can fall in love with it, but it has to happen organically. But one of the ways that that can happen is by getting these toys into the hands of children. Children are the future, not to be, uh, you know, too sacrosanct there, but they're the future of toy brands. And the only way toy brands are going to survive is if kids are playing with and asking to be given more toys from a brand they like. Now, you can't obviously force a child to play with a toy, but you can help them fall in love with a toy. And that's the whole point. You can fill their, you know, birthday wish lists with product. Now, another thing that can be done, and maybe it's a little unorthodox, but you can buy toys and donate them. And yeah, it might sound a little odd, but at the end of the day, that's all that matters, is that this product is moving and selling. So if you have a favorite toy line and you want to see it continue, one thing you can do is you can buy up product and donate it. Get it to kids. I mean, it's not being thrown away. At least it's going to children. Because again, sales are first and foremost. So... The retailers and manufacturers don't care what happens to it once it leaves the register. And if you want to see more product ship, sometimes buying up all the product on shelf and, yeah, donating it to a school or a charity is a way to go. I'm not saying you have to do this. Obviously, there is new content out there for both Motu and for Star Wars to get kids into the brand. And that's another thing is you can expose them to this new content. And a lot of this new content has toys directly. Now, they may not be the toys we want to buy. They may be more kid-aimed product, but at least they are getting kids into the brand. And the more kids that are into the brand, the better chance collector product that hangs adjacent to kid product. So this is an example of Star Wars kid product. Kid product begets collector product. The more kid product that's on shelf, the more kid product that's selling, the more collector product we'll get. So if you look at things like the previous iteration of both He-Man and Star Wars, and yeah, I know, I seem to be finding a way to tie both these brands together. The previous incarnation, or the previous entertainment for both, underperformed. Both in terms of the number of people who watch the show and or movie, as well as the toy sales. And the toys for both Star Wars and Masters of the Universe have been aimed at kids. That has been the main audience. Now, whether, well... Kids, basically, the fact that they weren't buying this product shows that they weren't getting into the property, and that's an issue with the content. But you can see from the toy lines how much the toys tried to appeal to kids. There were collector product that also shipped with the kid product, again, as an adjunctive, adjacent offering. And this product did sell well, but it's secondary, and for the most part, Collector product tends to be, at least the hardcore collector product, really sold either online, like the sale barge, 
or at conventions, like this item here, or some of the uh, Masters of the Universe 2000X figures that were more collector-focused, like Keldor here, was an exclusive to conventions, not sold at retail. And that really is the key, and sort of the proof in the pudding of how much retail is dependent on kid and gift giver purchases. If it's super collector, it's got to be sold online, mail away, or at conventions. We are such a drop in the bucket, and I hate the fact that I keep coming back to this argument, but I do see a lot of sort of pushback in my comments section and other places online questioning the whole idea that gift givers are the main purchaser in the in the toy aisle as far as adults going to the toy aisle. For us, as adult collectors, we go there every day. It's part of our routine. Maybe we're going there multiple times a week, multiple times a day, you know, as part of our daily schedule. But looking at that, you know, that's such a tiny part of the population. We're just very loud online, and being loud online and posting over and over again and having all these websites and YouTube videos creates the perception that there's more of us. But in reality, that's sort of a warped perspective. The number of adults that go to the toy aisle, the number one reason is to buy a gift, and the number one reason to buy a gift is actually for your child's friend's birthday, because that happens 30 times a year as opposed to your child's birthday happens once a year, or Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah happens once a year. And kids need brands reinvented for their generation. If you look at something like He-Man, one of the reasons that kids pushed away from the 2000X version is they saw him as a naked Tarzan-type character running around in furry underwear. And while that worked in the 80s when muscle men were a big part of culture and we were living in the Cold War and you had, you know, Stallone and then... And, and, Schwarzenegger and all that in the movies, well, eventually, He-Man had to be armored up, and that armor upping continued in the new content. Every decision is driven by a marketing report. I can't tell you that enough. Toy companies do not get up from their desk without a marketing report. And when product sits on shelf and doesn't sell, well, that basically flags for the retailer that this line is not going to work and needs to be put on clearance. And again, because the assortments are linked, it means that new waves are going to go the way of old waves. And we saw this happen with the She-Ra toys from a few years ago. They launched, and they didn't perform well out the gate, and went right on clearance, which prevented future waves from even shipping. And it looks like that's starting to happen with vintage series and Origins. So everybody wants to be part of the toy aisle. Every toy company wants to jump in. And there's only 20 feet of space. So, you know, 10, 10 on each aisle for the action figure aisle, 10 feet on each side, 20 feet. Everybody wants this. Everyone's competing for it. So stores are very quickly going to replace any brand not performing. So buy product, get it into the hands of kids. That is the best way to see our collector lines continue. Because the more kid product that ships, the more adjunctive collector product can go along with it to fill out the planogram. And that is what we could possibly do to keep collector product at retail, or at least product that also appeals to collectors. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do share it with others. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. I always comment back, and we'll keep that algorithm chugging along. I'll see you guys next time. Suggestions for videos, always welcome.